All right. And she is going to guide you through the plantation and also the factory and so. So please watch your step. Once you come back to, I don't know why it ends right there. Uh, I will let you know our departure time from here. Okay. Good advice is that before you get on the bus, you go to the bathrooms. From here to the hotel, maybe an hour and thirty, up to two hours, if it was not traffic. So maybe doing a pit stop would be a good idea. All right. So ready? Ready. 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 All right. Hi everybody. Hello. Hi. Hi. How was the lunch? Good. 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 The dessert was the best. Right. Very good. So. Are you ready for this experience at Hacienda Loca? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Let's do it. Okay. Oh, little baby copies. Correct. So then you can get closer, stay under the shade if you want. <laughs> I was trying to get out of the way a little bit. The bar, the bar. I do to people in school. Oh, All right. Screen saver did crack. Okay, everybody. So our coffee harvest is over. Actually, uh, the coffee harvest is from October to January. So, well, we don't have more coffee on the plants, but we have a picture right here. <laughs> Coffee cherries are green, and when the coffee cherries ripe, they turn red. And yes, coffee is a fruit, and where we roast are the coffee beans inside the fruit. Most of the most of the fruits have two beans inside, but sometimes it's just one, hmm. and sometimes hmm. will be three. <laughs> La pulpa is the outer skin, the cascara. The mucilago is the sugar layer. It has some fructose and glucose. Mm. The pergamino is a kind of inner husk that covers the bean. But that bean is also the seed that we plant to get more trees. Mm. Oh. And look at this. This is a five weeks old coffee oh, plant. Wow. <laughs> it's so cute. Right? <laughs> it's so cute. And this one right here is five months oh, wow. old. Oh my god. Wow. They grow really, really wow. slow. Wow. Yes. Whoa. And we work in this germination process in nurseries. When the plants are one year old and look this size, it's time to transplant it into the ground. But we have to wait until they are three years old and look this size to start getting the first cherries. Mm. Wow. Coffee producers have to be really patient. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but it's coffee, so, so much. But but <laughs> at the end, it's coffee, so it's worth yeah. the big <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How long uh, do they produce beans? In this region of the country, the plants are productive for 25 years. Wow. wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. So once it's about this size, it goes on for 25 years? Correct. Okay. For 25 years, but just during those four months, between October right. to January. Oh, okay. Okay. By the way, are you ready to see how we pick the coffee from yeah. the cherries? Yeah. Yeah. So we go that way. Here we are in a little part of our coffee fields, but this entire farm is 150 acres. It's a very big farm. And all the coffee farms in Costa Rica look pretty the same. They are subdivided in different rows. And in each row, <coughs> we plant two trees together in the same space. Can everybody see them? The two of them together? 
And the reason? Because Costa Rica is a small country. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this technique helps us to save the space and allow us to produce a little bit more in a smaller place. Okay? And how we are a small country and we are not able to produce quantity to compete in the international market with countries much bigger than us, we must to compete growing and producing quality. Exactly, the best quality. And that's the main reason why we still pick the coffee by hand. Hmm. Some other countries already have machinery that check the plants and all the coffee cherries just fall down. Hmm. The problem, guys, is that the machines upset the plants, hmm. destroys them. And the machines are not able to distinguish just the ripe fruits. Hmm. They pick all of them, even the green ones. So, well, we don't have machines, but we have, look at this, high technology baskets. <laughs> it's like a laundry bas basket, right? But it is plastic, so it's a layer material to walk around the fields. It has a very high tech belt. <laughs> you turn around the waist. And this shape, so it is ergonomic for the body. <laughs> a volunteer who want to hold the basket, the give you guys. The, the, the. Come here. Come. Okay. <coughs> so I'm gonna turn oh, around you. I guess this is too big for you because we don't approve <laughs> child labor. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing. Good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess well, you are big enough. It looks like you're big enough to work. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now you pretend that you're picking coffee and they take you pictures. Beautiful <laughs> tourist. <laughs> How old are these trees? Around 13 years old. 13. Is that being ripe? No. Which one? What are those? Weeds. Those are weeds? Oh, I thought those were coffee beans. No, 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 no. Any of those are coffee beans. We don't have coffee beans right now. How many plants does it take to fill that basket? Well, another, how not all the cherries ripe at the same time. <coughs> so we need like 20 or even more to fill one of those. The, the, thank you so much. You did a great. The coffee pickers have to pass for the same trees like three or four times, selecting just the ripe fruits. And that's why the harvest takes four months. You did a great. Thank you so much. What is the temperature when they're picking? Well, at the beginning of the harvest, this is still the rainy season. So October and November is still raining a lot. And, uh, and December and January, it's like right now. Oh, this is beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Is this it a is. natural height of the plant or you crop the top? Yes, we have to trim them every, like this row as well, every five years because uh, the, co the Arabica coffee plant can grow over 20 feet tall. Oh, wow. Yes, wow. so we have to cut them, but we are always rotating the fields. So while some of them are producing cherries, some of them are growing. Yeah. But when so you cut the top, does it, it doesn't change the growth in any way or shape. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's because this is very noisy. When, when you cut the top, a lot of times then it grows out wide or stuff. Mm -hmm. they, do, they do the same thing? No. Yeah, no, I mean, they look like exactly the same like this. They grow. And it just yes. 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 yes, I mean, yeah. I know, I know what you mean, but it looks yeah. like the coffee plant. Can you, can like you this. root the cuttings? Okay, you, mm, well, some people are doing it. Actually, they're making a kind of hybrid, so they cut like a branch and and let the roots grow. But in this farm, we don't do that. How many people do you have to employ yearly to pick your beans? Remember that this farm is 150 acres, so we need to employ around 100 coffee pickers, minimum. And uh -huh, do the birds try to eat the beans? Fortunately, we have a very good relationship with birds. <laughs> because most of the birds that live in the fields are insectivorous. They don't eat coffee cherries, but they eat the insects that attack the cows. That's the food too. Helping the ecosystem. Is there a flower that moves? Yes. Like three days ago, we had flowers, but now they fall off. But yes, there are some of them. Ah, oh, look at this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a coffee flower. This is the coffee flower. It's white. Oh, pretty. It's very pretty. Does it smell, Does it smell, smell like coffee? Yes, like, no, no, it smells like jasmine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jasmine. Oh, will that turn into a bagu? Yes. 
Jasmine, that's why coffee is a cheer. Oh, yeah. Alright, so look at this basket, guys. It is 26 pounds capacity. 26 pounds of coffee fruits. But as I mentioned before, we have to remove layers that are covering the beans inside. And now you guys guess how many pounds of coffee beans we left at Eight. the end of the process. One. How many? Eight. Less. One. More than one. Five. One and a half. Five. Two. Four. Five. You are very, very close. Three. Four. Three. Wow. From 26 to 3 pounds. Why you cannot understand much better the price of the good coffee, right? Right. But we can also see why in Costa Rica all the coffee producers pay to the workers, to the coffee pickers, according to how much coffee they pick a day okay? oh. as much coffee they pick as much money they make oh. costa rican people guys don't like to pick the cup <laughs> exactly most of our coffee pickers are migrants from nicaragua and indigenous people from panama costa rican people well don't like to pick the coffee because they wait to pay of course because it's an intensive labor, mm. but the most important reason because it's a seasonal work just for mm. months. Mm. So a way that we have as company to guarantee a good number, a good amount of coffee pickers is that we provide them a free accommodation where they can live. For four months. For the four months, correct. And it includes <laughs> water, electricity, transportation, mm. and medical insurance, and child care. Oh, wow. oh. Some families have the opportunity to migrate together and both parents can work, save money. And children are always safe. No food. No, actually, well, we don't provide them food in that directly way. But we grow bananas, plantains, avocados, mangoes, squash, pumpkins, beans, and some or other products in the same field. So they can take all of those products and save money. Now, if they have to buy, for example, toilet paper, or beef, or something like that, well, they have to. So where do they go for the other eight months? Well, most of them go back to their country. Some, some of them stay here on the same country. So they work for the pineapple fields for a while, or they go to the oil, plant, pa, oil palm uh, fields. Yeah. It's a little better than that. Yes, a little better. What took them here? Okay, everybody! Oh, well, there are some more people coming. <laughs> yeah, there's the top tray one. <laughs> Coffee pickers have to be precise and select 
the larger and bigger fruits. That represents more value and better quality. At the end of the day, we have people on the fields using the cajuela to measure how many of those each coffee picker make during the day. And we pay them according to the number of cajuelas. And we pay to the workers daily on the fields. <coughs> we pay them, guys, $3 per each cajuela. And just to let you know, who regulates the price of one cajuela is the government. It's not the coffee fee, uh, are not the coffee producers, okay? So, we pay to the workers daily. An average speaker make 10 cajuelas a day. Thirty dollars a day. $30 is more than the minimum salary in Costa Rica per day. So an average coffee picker can make the minimum salary, or even more if they're foster, and all the benefits that are already made. Okay? So we pay to the workers on the bills every single day. And when we receive the coffee here, we have to measure the coffee again. At this point, we don't need to know who picks the coffee. That's irrelevant. We just need to make sure that the results match. The total amount of coffee that we already pay on the fields has to be the total amount of coffee that we are receiving at this station. And that's why we have these bigger bucks. Oh, no, I'm sorry. These bigger bucks. <laughs> it is 10 times this. So we can measure the coffee faster. The tractor comes here, we remove that security bar, we dump the cherries in this box, and when this is full, we open it and coffee goes down. Mm. This tank is going to be full of water onto the top. Imagine a kind of pool. So one kind of coffee goes to the bottom and sink, but another kind of coffee floats on the water. My next question is, which is the better quality? The heavier ones, correct. The ones in the bottom because they have more sugars. That's why they are better quality. Floating cherries are not ripe cherries like the little green one from the picture. Cherries that were died by insects or attacked by fungus, and that's why they are lighter and float to the water. Right? And look at this. This pipe right here works as a vacuum. All the pressure that generates the water on the tank and the air and the push up, sucks up all the coffee from the bottom. And look at this, it is connected with another pipe. That's a siphon that takes all that coffee and water from the bottom to the next station. But while this pipe sucks the coffee and the water, this pipe expels water to fill the tank, to keep it full. And that pipe expels water at the same time. Besides, the water power moves like a storm, all the floating coffee and overflow through this hole in the wall. Hmm. That's a separate channel that's taking the lower quality to the next station. Hmm. Okay? And look at this, guys. This is the old-fashioned Excel sheet. <laughs> <laughs> the old-fashioned computer. <laughs> it is to account how many of those we are receiving. So when this is full, we open it, and that's the way how we account how many of those we are receiving per truck. Hmm. Is it clear? Yeah. Do <laughs> um, the workers work seven days? No, actually, they work, the schedule is from Monday to Friday, from 6 a.m. to 3 p.m. Saturdays they just work at mornings, and the sun the Sundays are their day off. And is the runoff the they use for anything? The lower quality? Yes. yes. We don't sell it as our brand, okay? It's not our <laughs> coffee. The only coffee that's our brand is the premium quality. But, um, well, that coffee, guys, don't follow standards to be exported either. So we sell it here in the same country. Our different roasteries, they are not producers. We are producers, but they are different roasteries that buy uh, pewter qualities from different producers. They make a big mass of coffee and roast the coffee, rebrand it, and sell it as a coffee. In the, in the supermarket, in the gasoline station, 
the gas station somewhere else, you know? But it doesn't go to waste either. Something else? Drink it and buy it. So it's a combination of all different things. Yes, exactly. It's not like a single origin coffee. It's just like pewter qualities from different kind of producers around the country. Do they use any kind of fertilizer to make these beans bigger? I mean, no, they're, they're not like genetic, gen genetic modified. No, we have different varieties. All the coffee that we grow in the country is Arabica. And we have different genetic variations, but some of them are hybrids that grow naturally or uh, mutations. Okay, but the, we don't, I mean, we don't modify them genetically. Okay, ready to see the next station, guys? Yeah, yes. Sure. Awesome. So, our next step is down these stairs. This is the real process. Giant bingo machine here. I missed. I think that sounds that way.
So at this station, bacteria and microorganisms that live in the river water decompose the oh, sugar man. that covers the bees. Oh, oh man. man. <laughs> Please don't be concerned about the bacteria because the bee, the actual bee, this is still covered by an inner husk. Mm -hmm. So bees are never exposed to the microorganisms. Okay? This process takes 36 hours, like one day and a half. Then we have to open those little gates one by one, separate by quality, and take the coffee from the tank to the sun drying area outside there. Uh, mm. oh my. That's not a parking lot, okay? Yeah. <laughs> it's a big parking lot. A coffee bean parking lot, that's right. Yeah. Exactly. That's where we take advantage to, uh, of the sun to dry the beans by a natural way. It's the cheapest mechanism to dry coffee beans, by the way. The problem is that we are in the rainforest. I can. Mm. And October and November is still raining a lot. But that's why, guys, we have a plan B. Look at the station four. Mechanical coffee dry. <laughs> If this wow. was the production time, we would be seeing this happen. Yes, happening. yes, when it's happening, like, you can right see right everything right. right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, what's the thing I'm doing? I'm going to Hmm. This, guys, is the parchment. 
What protects the bean from the river bacteria? What protects the bean from the concrete in the patio? What protects the bean when we are aging the coffee in the sacks? But three months later, we have to open the sacks and one by one remove the husk. One by one. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> Oh, you wouldn't be smiling. No. <laughs> Actually, we have we have a friction machine. It's a very high tech machine that generates friction. So the friction takes off the husk from the bean. Mm -hmm. That's how we do it. So then we get the bean and we can finally roast it. But guess what? This husk, the shell, doesn't go to waste. Mm -hmm. This is flammable. Oh. Oh. That's oh. 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 It's part of the fuel. Oh, she said it in oh. something else. So I was wondering when you were going to say what that was. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. Something else. <coughs> this, is, this is a surprise. Yes. But of course, this is not enough. This and we have to cute. burn wood. And you guys look at the kind of wood that we burn. Can oh. you recognize it? Manzanita? One and oh, 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 the three months of <coughs> storage? Correct. Okay. Correct. That's the coffee that we harvest between December and January. Okay. Uh-huh. Hay una señora aquí que está un poquito There it is. There you go. And another one gets wet. 
So we have to flip the coffee every 45 minutes. Oh. <laughs> Hundred years to develop this. I'm sure. And when we push, we clean some spaces to work. That way, we are going to step on the beans as much as possible. Okay. But now, guys, let me challenge you. Come on and try. Come here, get closer. Break a leg. So it may only be a third or a fourth. Okay. Yes. Right and we have to label them. Okay. Okay, here we have some more space. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. I'm gonna sue you. Okay, get closer. You're, you're fine. Okay. <laughs> okay. I guess I guess everybody can get into the room. Okay, so guys, those are the roaster machines right there in that room. This is the packaging room. There are my co-workers right there. <laughs> and look at those boxes. All of our coffee break is Rainforest Alliance certified. Okay? So that means that well we have a social responsibility with all the people involved in the harvest, but we also have different sustainable or agroecology farming practices, okay? And um, here we have a reminder. This is the way how we dry the beans with a husk on it, with a parchment, but then we have to remove it, get the beans, and finally roast them, okay? This is the way how Costa Rica, our country, exported the coffee to different countries around the world. And the different buyers roast the coffee by themselves, okay? But, here, we keep all the premium quality to roast it as our brand. We have light, medium, and dark roast coffee. We roast the coffee all at the same temperature. It's a range between 300 and 20 Fahrenheit degrees to 450 Fahrenheit. So what changes is for how long we roast the coffee. The light roast coffee is 15 minutes, 15, one five, that's it. Medium roast is 17, two more minutes. And the dark roast coffee for 20. And this is, guys, our light roast coffee, and it's called Del Patio. Del Patio, that means from the patio. Because those beans were dried by the sun. Oh. Just by the sun. And when we dry the coffee by the sun, coffee can taste up a little bit sweeter. Mm. Okay. But this is a light roast coffee. And actually, all the light roast coffees are more acidic. Mm. Oh. Actually, the coffee is acidic. But mainly, a coffee that grows in this region, close to the volcano. Because the pH on the soil is very low and acid. So this... But your coffee tastes like tangerine, orange, and has a sweet aftertaste like maple syrup. Wow. <laughs> Del Patio Coffee. Then yeah. guys, it's the pea berry coffee. Pea berry. Pea berry. Okay, and what's a pea berry? Do you remember the beginning when I asked you, uh, no, sorry, I told you that most of the coffee brews have two beans inside. <coughs> Sometimes it's just one. The pea berries, are the single beans. I'm gonna pass around one pea berry bean and you can notice that they are like rounder. Regular beans are flat. Can you please pass around so everybody can see them closer? The, the pea berries are, uh, I'm gonna pass around, two, two sides. Okay. You're welcome. At the end of the process, when we remove the husk, uh, we put the beans, all of them are together, we put them in a screen roller machine, and the screen roller machine produces a vibration movement by a vertical way, and how those beans are rounder, so they can roll up, and that's how we separate them. Yes. Now, guys, the single beans, the pea berry beans, came from a fruit that just grow one, one bean. 
that grows the same amount of fructose, glucose, carbohydrates, and sweetness. So it's one bean with the sugar content of two beans. Sweeter coffee. And the Pimeri coffee is medium roast, 70 minutes. And the two more minutes caramelize the sugars on the bean so this coffee can taste sweeter. Like chocolate, caramel, and sugar cane. Sign me up. <laughs> All right, this guys is the espresso roast. Espresso. This coffee was designed to brew in the espresso machine. It's not a rule. I mean, we can brew any other kind of coffee on the espresso machine. But this coffee was designed to add milk and egg. So when we make a latte or a cappuccino, we feel a good balance between the coffee and milk. Okay. But if you like coffee with milk, this is also a good option. What's the name? Espresso. Espresso. Oh, okay. Yes. Then, guys, is the dark roast coffee. In this case, it's our strongest, a more intensive flavor. And it's a little bit more bitter, and it also has a better body on the palate. To understand the body on the palate, it's like when we compare drink milk with a tea or water. The tea and water are lighter, but milk is more dense. It's a different texture on the, on the palate. Have you ever feel that yes. sensation? Okay, we can feel something similar from the dark rose coffee. Then, the next one is the house blend. The house blend, the mix of this house. It is dark rose coffee because, well, we like this sensation on the mouth, but we blend it with the light rose coffee and we add some of those citrus flavors originally from this region close to the volcano. So this coffee is not too much acid, but it's not too much strong either. It's very balanced and it has different flavors and sensations on the same cup. The house blend. House blend. House blend. <laughs> then is the breakfast blend. Coffee for mornings. <laughs> but it's not a rule either, and you can drink it anytime. <laughs> it is Peaberry beans, the single ones, and Café del Patio from the patio. Because the intention of my co-workers was design the sweetest cup. And that's why they blend the single beans with coffee that was dry by the sun. This is breakfast blend. And the last, but not least, the decaf coffee. This is our option for all the people who like coffee. Let me tell you. This is for the people who like coffee, but for some reason cannot drink the caffeine. Okay? This coffee was decaffeinated by a natural way, by water. Okay? The most common way to decaffeinate the coffee is by a chemical process. But in this case, we did it using the Swiss water process. Actually, we don't do it in Costa Rica. We have to send the beans like this to Mexico. Mexico is the closer country that decaf coffee using this method. So what they do is that they wash the beans like this with a very hot temperature water. And all the caffeine dissolves on the water. Then they extract the caffeine from the water and they sell it to somebody else. Like the energy drinks companies, the pharmaceutical industry, but guys, somebody else can use it. I mean, it doesn't go to waste either. You should keep it here. <laughs> does the, uh, the caffeinated coffee, does it all have the same caffeine content? Or Very good question. Yes, actually, some years ago, people thought that the light roast coffee has more caffeine because it's less roast. I've heard that too. But before that, people thought that the dark roast coffee is stronger and more intense, so it has more caffeine. But the last research from a Switzerland university discovered that the caffeine alkaloid, or the molecule, is thermally stable. It doesn't burn. That's why now we can extract the caffeine using very hot water, because it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't burn. The caffeine content depends on the genetic of the plants that grow on the fields. And it doesn't matter how we roast it, all of them are gonna have exactly the same caffeine content. What changes at this point, guys, is just the taste on the coffee. Because everything is coming from the same raw material. 
same grade, same quality, same, same thing. What changes is just for how long. So what changes is the taste. And you know what? That's why at the end, the best coffee in the world is the one you like. <laughs> because that depends, it's up to your taste. You know, depends on what you want to drink, if you like coffee with milk, with sugar, espresso. It's all right. Coffee is mine to be enjoyed. So have your coffee just the way you like. <laughs> the, all the different coffees that you pointed out to us, that each single one of them still could be naturally dried or dried according to the, the okay. weather. Okay, very good question. Actually, all the coffee that we process in this coffee meal has to go to the patio be, um, for minimum 24 hours. Because if we just take the coffee from the fermentation process and we put it directly on the mechanical dryers, the coffee is too much wet mm -hmm. and that can damage the machinery. Mm -hmm. So at the end, everything is sun dried. But sometimes we have to start drying the coffee on the patio and then move put it, it, exactly, mm -hmm. move it out to finish the drying process by the machinery. Mm -hmm. Because, well, it's raining or we have 